everybody to Tempe Diablo Stadium. Terry Smith along with Tim Salmon and our producer engineer Darren Chan here on the Angels Baseball Network and Fox Sports West. Well, the weather has gotten better since the last time we visited with you. And we're anticipating the start of the ball game uh, within the next five minutes. They have taken the tarp off the field. Grounds crew members are getting the field ready for baseball. Some of the players uh, on the Arizona side are out uh, loosening up out in the outfield. And so it looks like we're going to at least begin this ball game a little bit later than scheduled, but at least we're going to get things underway. And we'll just have to see uh, how the rest of the day develops weather-wise here in the Valley. As the uh, Angels and Diamondbacks get ready to square off today, Angels here in the Cactus League, a record of three wins, eight losses, two ties. Arizona, a record of five wins, eight losses, and they have had one tie. And let's run down the starting lineups again for uh, both teams here on this Friday. For the Diamondbacks, leading it off will be their center fielder, Adam Eaton, batting second at shortstop, former Oakland A shortstop Cliff Pennington. He was obtained by Arizona in the offseason. Aaron Hill had a very good year for the D-backs. Will be their second baseman. He hit over 300 last year. Had over 25 homers and better than 80 runs batted in. He'll bat number three. Paul Goldschmidt, who had a nice uh, first full season with Arizona, will be the first baseman. He bats number four. 20 home runs, a 286 batting average a year ago. Jason Kubel, who slugged 30 homers and drove in 90 runs to lead the D-backs last year, will be in left field. He bats out of the number five hole. Mark Tian. Former uh, Kansas City Royal, who was in the minors all of last year, signed with Arizona as a minor league uh, player, trying to win a spot on their opening day roster. He'll be at third base. He bats number six. And the bottom third of the order for the D-backs in right field, A.J. Pollock, former first-round pick. Will Nieves, the catcher, bats number eight. He is a former angel. And D.D. Gregorius, who the... Diamondbacks acquired in the offseason. Uh, Good-looking uh, shortstop. He came over in a three-team deal from Cincinnati. He will be the uh, DH for Arizona today and bat number nine. Their starting pitcher, Randall Delgado, he was acquired from the Braves this offseason. And the Justin Upton deal, 23-year-old right-hander who was 4-9 with Atlanta last year, 4-3 and in AAA a season ago. For the Angels today, no regulars in the lineup. Uh, originally, uh, back earlier this morning, we saw seven of the uh, regular nine players in the Angels lineup. They've all been scratched now. So the lineup today, uh, following this rain delay, looks like this. At shortstop, leading it off will be Luis Rodriguez. Batting second will be the designated hitter, Cole Calhoun. Hank Conger, who was in the original... Angel lineup uh, is in the lineup here as we are minutes away from the start of the ballgame. He'll be the catcher batting number three. He was originally slated to hit a lot lower today. Luis Jimenez at first base bats cleanup. Caleb Cowart, who's had a solid spring for the Angels, will play third base and bat number five. Taylor Lindsay at second base will hit number six. Randall Gritchick, former first-round pick of the Angels, will be in right field batting number seven. Trent Olchin who spent some time with the uh, Dodgers, played in AAA in the Dodgers organization last year, will be the left fielder. The Australian Olchin bets number eight. And Travis Witherspoon, who's had a nice spring for the Angels, will be the center fielder, and he will bet number nine. As far as the Angels' starting pitcher, it's 32-year-old right-hander Joe Blanton, 6'3", 235-pounder. This will be his second start this spring. And Blanton last year between Philadelphia and the Dodgers had a record of 10 wins, 13 losses, with an earned run average of 4.71. The umpires today, Jim Wolf will be calling balls and strikes. We'll have Kerwin Danley, uh, Bruce Dreckman, and also we will have... Uh, Patrick Mahoney will be the uh, other umpire on the bases for the ball game today between the Angels and the Diamondbacks. Tim Salmon alongside, and Tim, it was uh, up in the air whether or not we'd have some baseball. At least we're going to get started. Yes. There's actually a little bit of blue sky out there. Yep. Lights are on, blue sky a little bit, but I can't really see what what's behind us, and that's where it's going to be coming from. So we've got the game started, and all that really matters is uh, getting Joe Blanton's first few pitches out, out, out of the way here and getting the game started. So Blanton is about ready to wrap up the warm-up tosses. 
And uh, he will get ready to face the Diamondbacks. The Angels have the Red Tops white pants. And the uh, Diamondbacks, they have kind of the uh, desert red tops. And they have the gray pants. The dimensions here at Tepe Diablo, 340 down the left field side. It goes 359 down the right field side, 420 to dead center, and the power alleys expand out to 400 feet. So we are set for baseball. Adam Eaton, who's a speedy player, just a little guy, will lead it off. Left-handed batter, and he chops the first pitch on an easy hop to second. Lindsey has it. He'll throw him out, and we're underway. One pitch and one quick out here in the top of the first inning. Well, we need Joe Blanton to throw a few more pitches this out. He only threw 20 in his last one, and there again, one pitch, one out. I don't know what it is with certain guys. They must know that he's going to give you a good look at some pitches out over the plate. So here's Pennington. He's having a good spring with his new club, former uh, Oakland A. Switch hitter. He bats from the left side, and the pitch on Pennington. He takes the first one, and it's in there for a called strike. The count, nothing and one. 63 degrees as we get things going here in Tempe. And the next pitch, that one misses high on Pennington. One ball, one strike to count. Cliff was one of the newcomers this offseason. The Diamondbacks have made a ton of changes, brought in a lot of new personnel. And here's a pitch that he lifts on the right side of the infield. The second baseman, Lindsey, is on the dirt under, and he'll put it away for the second out. So Taylor Lindsay's had a couple of plays here to uh, retire the first two A's batters or uh, the uh, Diamondbacks, Arizona Diamondbacks batters. And Aaron Hill will be the next hitter. Hill at second base today. And he's having a good spring. He had a very good year for Arizona last year. I've always liked Aaron Hill. He's got a nice swing. He's had some big year, big years so far. I mean, and once again, last year in Arizona, he turned it around. I, that last year in Toronto, he kind of got out of sync a little bit there, but it looks like he's back to swing the bat like he can. And he hits that one hard, but foul over on the left side, so the count, no balls and two strikes. He's a former first-round pick of Toronto. He's been an all-star. And last season, uh, hit a career-high 3-0-2. He's had some... Uh, quad and hip flexor issues so far this spring as that one is fouled off down the left side back and out of play. Two strikes to count on Hill. Top of the first inning. No score. Angels and D-backs. And I don't think Joe Blanton's throwing a ball yet. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the two strike pitch. This one's lifted in the air into left field. Going back is Olchin. Still going back. Still going back. Olchin uh, jumps up out at the fence there and that ball is gone. So that one kind of came out of nowhere, although Aaron Hill's a guy who has very good power, and he showed it right there. The wind helped that one, no doubt, out to left field. A solo homer with two outs. It's one nothing Arizona. Well, I would not feel too badly about that one. That was a pretty decent pitch. Reached out. Looked like he kind of got it off the end, but the, like you said, the wind is blowing out pretty good to left field, and it just snuck over the fence there for him. So the batter now uh, taking a pitch for a strike is Paul Goldschmidt, their first baseman. He's another player with good power. And the pitch on Goldschmidt, that's in there for a called strike. He had 20 homers last year, and he also had a lot of doubles, 43 doubles last year. And all of a sudden now, I think we're starting to get some more rain. Ooh, pitch, and that one just missed. So the count, one ball, two strikes. Now that was, the, that was the third pitch in the exact same spot. I don't know where that one was as far as the umpire. Wolfie was thinking. Here's the 1-2 delivery. And it missed outside. Two balls and two strikes. Well, a lot's been made about Joe Blanton and the fact that he gives up some home runs. He's averaging almost a home run and a half per game last year. and But that's a ball that was hit that will... That's a... <laughs> Routine fly ball next in Anaheim yep. this year. Here's a pitch that Goldschmidt goes after. He swings and misses that one, and that is going to end the inning. So here in the first, the D-backs get a run on the solo homer by Hill. That was the only hit, no errors, and nobody left. We've completed a half inning. It's damp here in Tempe today. Arizona won. The Angels coming to bat on the Angels Baseball Network and Fox Sports West.
We get ready to move to the bottom of the first inning. one nothing D-backs. And the pitcher for Arizona is not going to be Randall Delgado. Instead, it's Brad Ziegler. So he will end up starting this ball game. And the rain is coming down uh, very hard right now. Here's the pitch. And the uh, first one that is in there for a called strike on Luis Rodriguez. So Brad Ziegler is the uh, starting pitcher, as it turns out, in this ball game for Arizona. And here's the 0-1. That one is low and in. One ball, one strike to count. Well, you know, Terry, it looks like they're just going to let this one play out. They're not going to bring that tarp back on. And if it gets too heavy out there, I think... Uh, I think that might be it for us. Yeah. Here's the next pitch. That's lifted foul on the left side, backing out of play. Well, the fans that came out here today, they certainly uh, are prepared. You see the umbrellas everywhere, the rain gear everywhere, ponchos, the slickers. A wet one here in Tempe. And they were predicting this, and sure enough, the uh, wet weather has arrived here in the valley. The pitch, that's low. Two and two is the count. There's actually some blue sky, though, off to the right. You can see some breaks in the, in the weather, and it just depends on which way the wind's blowing, if it's going to bring it towards us or not. Can't see what's going on behind us. Here's the next pitch from the submariner, Brad Ziegler, and that one's fouled off on the left side, so it's still two balls and two strikes. Ziegler will throw a sinker. He will uh, top out in the mid-80s, slider and a changeup. He likes to throw that change against left-handed batters, and Rodriguez switch hitting batting left here. The next pitch chopped foul over on the first base side, so it's still 2-2. Two and two. Ziegler was in 77 games last year for Arizona. He had a 6-1 record, 2.49 ERA. And a guy, uh, it's tough to elevate the baseball against him. He allowed only two home runs last year in just under 69 innings. And he did not allow any home runs the year before in the 2011 season. Yeah, it's tough to elevate a sinker. So he's set, and here comes the 2-2. Bounced on the right side. That's a base hit. Rodriguez, who's had a hot bat all spring. He is on with a leadoff single. He's now 10 for 20 this spring. He called timeout right before that pitch and went over and wiped the, the brim of his hat, with uh, wiped the water off it, just kind of cleaning the, the water off the windshield there and was able mm -hmm. to see the ball and squirt it up nicely. So the batter is Cole Calhoun. Calhoun's been fairly quiet this spring, just 3 for 21. And here's the pitch. He takes that one for a called strike. Angels used to see a lot of Brad Ziegler when he was a member of the Oakland A's. He was in their bullpen for a number of years. Cole's the kind of hitter that gives you a good at bat most every at bat. The other day we saw him take one up at the neck and then he turned around and <laughs> hit a double to left center field. That was a great piece of hitting and that just goes to show his maturity at the plate and He's a, he's a veteran hitter. I mean, he's only, I think this is only a second big league camp, but I got to believe Sosha and feel pretty confident about whatever uh, needs that they might have that they could call on him. Count is 1 1 on Calhoun. There goes the runner, Rodriguez, and Calhoun went uh, chasing that pitch, and he ended up uh, tipping that one foul. I, or uh, did he? No, I don't think not. he did. Okay. It was. He, he was in the other batter's box for sure. He uh, did everything he was supposed to do on the hit and run, make the make the attempt at it. The yeah, Evans just didn't handle that pitch cleanly, so it'll end up being a stolen base. And the Angels have a runner at second. Nobody out. Down one nothing here in the bottom of the first on a, a rainy day here in Tempe. Next pitch that's fouled back. And as we say rainy day, all of a sudden uh, the sun is peaking <laughs> There out. it is. This has been crazy here weather-wise. Arizona spring weather. Well, come back and visit us in a month, Terry, and <laughs> you'll be wishing it was raining. Yeah. That would be toasty, I'm sure. Yeah, those zonies, boy, we take the rain any day we can. So one ball, two strikes. 
Ziegler ready on the next pitch. Chopped on the right side. That'll get the runner over to third. Play by Hill to first. He's in plenty of time to get Calhoun, but he gets the job done. Moves that base runner over to third base with only one out. And Hank Conger with a chance to bring in Luis Rodriguez. Yeah, great piece of hitting right there, especially with two strikes. In that situation, you're just trying to stay alive and, and battle the pitcher. He's been throwing that sinker away from you. And he was able to get the head of the bat out and pull it over and make it a productive out. So here's Hank Conger. He leads the Angels and runs batted in so far this spring. He's driven in eight. And he has a chance to get one here. The pitch, he fouls that one off. A little bit out in front of that one. Kind of cued it, I believe. Conger, switch hitter, batting from the left side. We were talking about Ziegler and how tough it is to elevate the baseball against him. He was tied for fifth in uh, the National League as far as double play balls induced last year. And there's the pitch that's in there for a called strike. It's nothing in two. Well, Wolfie's got the big zone working today. Looking to get in as many innings as we can, I guess. That ball is out there pretty good. And played umpire Jim Wolf. They brought the infield in. The 0-2 on Conger. That's up and in. And the count one ball, two strikes. Well, this would be a good opportunity for Hank. You know, he's really got a lot. Probably feeling a little bit of stress this this uh, spring training, trying to make the club. Looks like this could be the year for it. And these are the kinds of at-bats that Sosh wants to see, you know, how he responds to them. Ziegler ready the next pitch. Bounce foul over near the Angels on deck circle. So the count remains at one ball, two strikes. Ziegler is 6'4", 212 pounds. He's a right-hander. And he is 32 years old. This is his third season now with Arizona. He joined them uh, during the 2011 season. Next pitch that's fouled off over by the Angels dugout. So the count remains one ball, two strikes. Pretty good battle going on here between pitcher and hitter. That was a really good swing right there by Hank. That sinker ball are going away from him on most, most of these pitches. He threw a little frisbee slider there, something coming in on him. Changing the eye level, looking in, looking out. He's battling in there, hanging in there. Conger trying to get that runner in. Here's the one two, and he lifts that one foul down the right side, backing out of play. Luis Jimenez waiting on deck. A lot of clouds in the sky. The sun peeking out, though. And at least for the time being, the rain has stopped. Ziegler is ready, and the 1-2 delivery. That's low and outside. 2-2 two and two is the count on Hank Conger. You know, I haven't seen a lot of Hank hitting in the minor leagues and, you know, just a handful of bats in the big leagues, but... I got to say, something stands out a little different to me this year, and it's just the fact in the games that I've seen, just the way he, he's comfortable getting deeper in the counts, not looking to make the at-bat get over in the first few pitches. And the next delivery fouls another one off, so a long at-bat here as Conger uh, continues to battle against Ziegler. Ziegler's not a big strikeout guy. You mentioned he gets his outs normally on the ground. And Conger continues to make some contact here with two strikes. That was one of the philosophies that Jim Eppert talked about in spring training, and Sosh has really been emphasizing as well, is being a tough out. Be, don't be afraid to get deep in the count. Oh, and there's a 2-2 pitch that he swings and misses. He got him, struck him out. Yeah, that's still a good at bat in my book. I'm sure Epp's going to say the same thing. He saw a lot of pitches there. Little change up right there, first time he'd seen it. Got him out in front of it, and, you know, you got to tip your hat sometimes, but that was a good at bat, and like I was saying, I mean, this whole spring, it's been about changing the philosophy of these hitters at the plate, working the count, getting deeper into the count, making the pitcher come to you, and and I, for the most part, I've seen a lot of these younger guys doing that. So here's Jimenez. He's driven in a couple so far this spring, and there's a breaking pitch on the outside corner. 0-1 the count. Around the infield, Goldschmidt playing first. Hill is the second baseman. Tian the third baseman for Arizona with Pennington at short. And Kubo on left, Eaton in center. 
Pollock in right. Davis catching. Gregorius is the DH and Ziegler pitching. Next delivery bounce on the third base side. It's a fair ball. It's going to drive in the runner. Rodriguez will score. Headed for second base is Jimenez. The ball was fumbled by Kubel out there on the wet surface, and that'll be an RBI double with two outs. The Angels get a two-out run to tie up the game here in the first inning at one. Terry, that was just an odd play right there. It was just a routine ground ball. Tehan was playing so far over in the hole. I mean, I guess it wasn't necessarily routine, but it wasn't exactly right down the line. And surprising when you consider you got a, a right-hander that likes to throw that sinker. You, you know, right-handed batter against right-handed sinker, you're going to get a lot of ground balls the left side of the infield over there. I just found it a little surprising to see Tehan so far off the line there. Yep. Good for the Angels. And... Uh, he didn't get much of a break at all while ranging to his right. That ball was uh, by him before he even really reacted. So it's yeah, right. a one, could, one ball game. Could be a little slick out there now, yep. too. Yep. <laughs> I think the uh, dirt is wet, obviously, getting a little uh, clumpy out there. And now uh, we're told that the uh, left fielder is Marte, Alfredo Marte. So uh, Kubel has already been... Uh, Hold in this ball game. He was uh, slated to lead off next inning, so he's been a scratch. And here's the pitch on Cowart. He takes that one for a ball. I got to believe if I'm Jason Kubel and I've come this far, waited this long, and I'm the next guy hitting, I'm begging to play one yeah. in that defense. I hear you. <laughs> Next delivery, that one on Coward, it's low, 2-0 oh, the count. You know, Kirk Gibson's already lost Cody Ross for a few weeks here in spring with a leg injury, and you know, it probably is a smart thing. Make sure you don't lose any more of these outfielders because you don't want to go into the season limping. Here's the next delivery. That's outside. 3-0 and oh is the count. Angels have used a couple of hits to get a run on the board here in the bottom of the first inning. Ziegler is set. Here's the next pitch. And he slings that one in there for a called strike. How do you used to like uh, facing the submariners, the <laughs> sidearm guys? Uh, it depended. If it was a guy that really threw a lot of sinkers, I didn't like it. But if it was a guy that I knew was going to try to trick it and flip up some sliders, I didn't mind it at all because all those sliders were, <laughs> they were hangers. Mm -hmm. And they usually relied on the hitter looking for that fastball and, you know, be setting on, you know, hitting the dead red. And, uh, and I always could work that against them. So right-handers don't like hitting sinker ballers just flat out. It's very difficult for them to get their, get the barrel on the ball and keep it in play. The count's full with two outs and the 3-2. It's way outside. Ball four. So the inning continues. Taylor Lindsay will be the next batter. And let's pause for station identification on the Angels Baseball Network and Fox Sports West. Terry Smith along with Tim Salmon and our producer engineer Darren Chan with you from Tempe. Angels and the Diamondbacks squaring off today. Lindsay, left-handed batter, chops the first pitch foul over near the Angels dugout. He's had five hits, including a home run and six RBIs and only 12 at bats so far this spring. Had a big day yesterday. Homer, four RBIs, I believe. Yep. Well, he is he's one of these hitters, you know, every, every player goes through a different stage of maturation and different time period. But he is ready to play from a hitting standpoint in the big leagues. It's just the defensive side of things. You got to be solid at second base and he needs a few more innings under his belt. Pitch on its way, grounds it to first right near Goldschmidt. He'll solo to the bag, and that will end the inning. So the Angels send six to the plate, get one in, had two hits, also walk no errors, and end up leaving a pair. After one in Tempe, we're tied at one on the Angels Baseball Network and Fox Sports West.
Alfredo Marte, the first batter for Arizona. Second inning, we go tied at one. And the first pitch, he takes it for a strike. It's nothing and one. Marte, Tian, and Pollock. Marte replacing Jason Kubel, who's in the original starting lineup. And the next pitch lifted in the air into very shallow left center field. Going back is Rodriguez, the shortstop. He's on the outfield grass. Under will put it away. That's the first out. Mark Tian will step up to the plate. Tian was an everyday player just a few years ago for the Kansas City Royals. And after he left Kansas City, he's kind of uh, bounced around. He was in the Washington Nationals organization last year, but never got back to the big leagues last season. Played in AAA, hit 260 last year. And the pitch, and he lifts one high and deep into left center field, chasing after it, and out on the warning track, making the grab is Trent Olchin. That ball just stayed in the ballpark. It was hit a good 390 out there to deep left center. Well, once again, that's what you're going to get with Bland. I mean, he throws a lot of strikes, and they'll leave him out over the plate, and the good thing is, is Anaheim, that's, a, that's an easy out. That's a routine fly ball out, and gets the crowd up on their feet a little bit for a minute there, but just another out. So two quick outs here in the second. A.J. Pollock stepping up. Takes the first one for a called strike. Getting back to Tehan, I can recall my last year in 06, or maybe it was 05 even. He was a big-time prospect for Kansas City. They had a lot of big things in plans for him. Yep. Here's a drive. It's lifted deep into right field. Running back after that one and making the grab as his momentum takes him out near the rim of the track is Randall Gritchick. Another long fly ball out, and the inning is over. Three batters retired in the air here in the second for Arizona. No runs, hits, or errors. Nobody left. We're headed to the bottom of the second inning. We're tied at one on the Angels Baseball Network and Fox Sports West. We have a new pitcher for Arizona, and on the mound, the pitcher who was scheduled to be the starting pitcher, Randall Delgado, will pitch after all. He didn't pitch in the first inning. They used Brad Ziegler, but he's in to work here in the second. And he is a right-hander who came over from the Atlanta Braves during the offseason. And so far this spring, he's uh, struggled a bit for Arizona. And the two appearances coming into today, one is a starter. He had given up nine hits and five earned runs in just three innings. So the first batter he will face will be Randall Gritchick, then Trent Ochin and Travis Witherspoon. It's the bottom third of the Angels' batting order. Randall versus Randall. Yep. So Delgado is set. And here's his first pitch. That's fouled back to the screen by Gritchick. 0 oh 1 is the count.
Delgado is a native of Panama. And here's the next delivery. That one is a called strike on the outside corner. Well, you'd think he'd have the, the inside edge at that number five spot for the D-backs just with his experience last year with Atlanta, but he's got some stiff competition. A couple former Angel farmhands battling it out as well in that five spot for him. Tyler Skaggs and Patrick Corbin, both lefties that have very good stuff and great upsides, and you know, they have some depth, actually, They this uh, Diamondback starting rotation. Arizona with some good young arms. Here's the next delivery. And that pitch is low. It's now two balls and two strikes. Another uh, pitcher uh, that should be joining them somewhere later on this season. Speaking of the D-backs is Daniel Hudson, who's coming back from Tommy John elbow surgery. He had that last July. And he was a 16-game winner for Arizona. Speaking of Hudson, back in the 2011 season. Two and two is the count on Grichik. Delgado ready. Here's the next pitch. And that one is fouled back. You got to think that Delgado growing up, I mentioned he's from Panama. He had to be a Mariano Rivera fan. That's the uh, native country for uh, Mariano. And I guess Mariano's officially going to announce he's retiring at a press conference sometime tomorrow. And uh, this will be his final year with the Yankees. Hmm. The 2-2. Two -two. That's low and inside, and it's three balls and two strikes. It's going to see. It's going to seem mighty strange to see anybody but Mariano Rivera closing out the games for the Yankees. No kidding. From here going forward, boy, what an icon! Rivera has pitched for the Yanks since 1995. He wasn't their closer initially, but been closing games for them for a long, long time. Really, the first year he began closing uh, games. And in every day, a closer's role for them was in 1997, and he's been doing it ever since. All right, all right, a little bit of angel trivia for you. Well, I just gave it away, actually. <laughs> <laughs> who was the last team he started against, and who was the player that had the last hit off of him? <laughs> <laughs> There's a ball that's lifted in the air into left center field, and making the uh, grab on that one out there is the left fielder, Marte, making the catch on that one as... The uh, center fielder Eaton peeled off at the last moment. Boy, Eaton was playing shallow and way over in right center field there. And he had to cover a lot of ground. And Marte kind of looked at him like, oh, do you want me to take this or not? So the batter now with one out is Trent Olchin. We're tied at one. We're in the bottom of the second on a damp day here in the Valley. The game was delayed because of rain. We had a 30-minute rain delay before we got underway. Here's the pitch, and that one is outside. So the count, one ball, no strikes. All right, I'm going to go back to our trivia question. Do you do you know who the the last hitter was that faced him and what he did off him? We're talking about Mariano Rivera as a starter. Uh, I'm going to go uh, It was Tim Salmon. <laughs> You think? And it was against the Angels <laughs> <laughs> in his last start as a Yankee. As a Yankee. How about I, that? I had two doubles off him. I hit one off the wall in right center field and ran him out of the game in the fourth inning. And you know, all of a sudden he resurfaces two years later as a closer, and I couldn't believe it was the same guy. Yep. That's a <laughs> ball that is bunted foul over on the left side. Well, I remember when uh, Mariano was working his way up the Yankee organization, and you're right, he was a starting pitcher, and he was uh, with me in... Columbus, and uh, I saw him pitch a no-hitter, but it was a uh, five-inning no-hitter. The game ended up uh, going five innings, and then rain uh, washed out the rest of the ball game. but it officially it was a, a regulation game. Well, he wasn't throwing that nasty fastball slash cutter right. back then as a starter. He right. figured that one out in the bullpen yep. one day. Yep. There's one that's fouled back, and... Uh, He's, he's kind of the, the pitcher that has his name stamped on that pitch. Oh, yeah. It's filthy. It's always funny in this game. You, there's always a handful of guys that you see him one year and you don't think much of them, and then three years later they resurface, and you're like, whoa, what happened here? And he was one of those guys that I just could not believe the transformation. It was a completely different pitcher. There's a pitch trying to check on it is Olchin. He went around, struck him out for out number two. So Travis Witherspoon will be the next batter. 
Witherspoon hitting out of the nine hole. Having a nice spring. He's had a home run for the Angels. He's driven in seven runs. Saw Witherspoon get that home run yesterday against the Padres. Angels had a a lot of offense yesterday. 12 runs, 15 hits, and slugged four home runs. The ball was jumping out of Peoria yesterday. There were seven home runs hit in that ball game between the two teams. Was the wind blown out? Was, yep. Here's the next pitch. Popped up foul back behind the plate, backing out of play. One ball, one strike. Terry had always... Uh, was surprising to me every year coming out of spring training how well the ball flew in spring training and then you get to An Anaheim and you're hitting in the cool air and it's like a parachute's on the ball. All right. There's a pitch that is cut on and miss one ball two strikes and that uh, marine layer to deal with at the big A for early in the season. Rain is starting to return right now. We're seeing a lot of the umbrellas opening up. Here's the next pitch, and checking the swing on that one is Witherspoon. Two balls and two strikes. There could come a time uh, here today, and uh, it wouldn't be surprising at all, where they might just decide that the uh, field is just not uh, safe to play on. This field has taken a lot of water here with the rain, and especially the uh, infield dirt. And the rain is coming down again. Here's the 2-2 delivery. It's grounded right to the shortstop. Fielded there by Pennington. His throw is low, but dug out nicely by Goldschmidt. And the inning is over. So 1-2-3 inning. It ends on a 6-3 ground out. Nothing going for the Angels in the second. We're headed to the third as we go there. Tied at one on the Angels Baseball Network and Fox Sports West. Don't forget the 20 game flex plan presented by Farmer John is a great way to see Angels baseball. Select the 20 games you want to see. Receive a ticket to Fan Appreciation Day for free. Buy your flex plan today at angels.com slash mini plans or call 888-796-HALO. First pitch from Blanton. It's fouled off by the catcher Nieves out of play. And the count no balls, one strike. Will Nieves... Then uh, D.D. Gregorius and Adam Eaton, 8-9, top of the batting order for Arizona. It's a 1-1 game. Rain is falling once again, and the pitch bounced right back to Blanton. Should have an easy play, and he underhands the toss to Jimenez, the first baseman, and one gone on the comebacker. Terry, that was the play that we were just talking about during the break you don't want to see with the wet grass and having Blanton come off the mound to field it. It's raining again, and there's a big thunder cell behind us, and um, I'm sure Sosha and, these, and, and his coaching staff are looking to just get Blanton this one more inning of work, and uh, whatever happens after that, they'd be good to go. 
So here is D.D. Gregorius. And the first pitch, that one is in there for called strike. He's a young player, a very a talented young player who the Diamondbacks acquired from the Reds. He's from the Netherlands. And the pitch, he slaps it fair on the first base side out of the reach of Jimenez. And Gregorius is on the move. He's headed for second. Grichik's throw to second. It's going to be close. And he's out at second base. Nice job by Randall Grichik right there. Of course, a, a muddy infield where uh, Gregorius had a run. He has very good speed, but he's gunned down on a strong throw to second base for the second out. Well, a couple things worked out really well there. First of all, Randall really got a great jump on that ball. But as you can see, going through the grass, the ball actually slowed down. It, typically, that might be a ball that gets down towards the wall, and you can imagine Didi's probably thinking, you know, it's an easy double. And, of course, with that, with combined with a wet track, slowed him down. And he was really, he was out pretty easily. First pitch on Adam Eaton. It's in there for a called strike. Next delivery, he slaps that one foul. So the count is nothing and two. <laughs> Joe Blanton's going to go three innings here. And. He might be lucky to throw 20 pitches. Right. <laughs> they yeah. need to stretch them out. I'm sure they're talking about that on the side. Maybe you go four innings. You got to start building some endurance in that arm. Rain uh, letting up a little bit right now. The pitch bounced down the third base side right at Coward. His throw to first is in time, and that will end the inning. So it will end on the 5-3 uh, ground out in the inning. No runs. They had the hit. Gregorius ended up getting a single, trying to stretch it into two. In the inning, there were no errors and nobody left. We see Angels manager Mike Socia going out. He wants to talk to the umpires. We'll see how much more baseball will play here today. It's a 1-1 game going to the bottom of the third on the Angels Baseball Network and Fox Sports West. Rodriguez will lead it off for the Angels. Top of the batting order as we go to the bottom of the third in a 1-1 ball game. Both the uh, managers and uh, one of the umpires, uh, Kerwin Danley, were uh, getting together behind home plate during the half inning break to first pitch. And Rodriguez lines one into right field. First ball swinging for another hit. He has been very hot this spring for the Angels. He's had 11 hits now. And his 21 times up, he's hitting over 500. Cole Calhoun will be the next batter. You kind of sense that maybe uh, this game will be called shortly, although as I say that, uh, right now the rain has completely stopped. Yeah, only for the moment. <laughs> right. And again, uh, the outfield uh, grass is very wet here today, and I think that's part of the concern. The pitch. There's a bouncing ball out on the reach of the third baseman, T, and then through in the left field. 
Calhoun uh, sounded like he broke his bat, got that single. The Angels have two runners on with nobody out. It's obvious that the infielders do not have much range today with that uh, wet infield dirt. It's get, getting muddy out there right now. And the batter for the Angels will be Hank Conger. He's the number three batter. The cleanup man today is Jimenez. He's waiting on deck. And the power of the lineup, it's brought to you by Lone Mart. Eat cash fast. If you have a car that's paid off or almost paid off, get $2,500 to $50,000 today with a quick and easy car title loan. Call 1-800-LONE-MART today. Terry, one of the... Uh interesting things that happens on rain outs and rain or rain games like this is how quickly the game moves and batters are up there swinging at the first pitches and pitchers are throwing strikes and two pitches two singles and here we are yep here's the first one on conger he takes it it's in there for a called strike angels have a run four hits d-backs a run two hits that wind has been uh, shifting blowing the uh, out right now. Kind of blowing uh, left to right right now as well. Here's the next delivery, and that one is low and inside. One ball, one strike on Hank Cogger. Yeah, that wind has changed. It was blowing out to left earlier in the game. Matter of fact, uh, who was it that hit the home run there? Hill. Aaron Hill. Yeah. That was kind of a wind-blowing homer, and if he would have hit that ball in this inning, I don't think it would have gone out. Yep, that would have been out. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Hank taking in there for a called strike one and two. The bad news about it blowing out to right like that is based on the radar that I just saw. <laughs> that's where that big cell is right behind us to the left and it's coming this way. Yep. You can see it's starting to get a little dark over here. Lights are on here at Tempe Diablo Stadium and the next pitch that one on Conger it's low. Two and two the count. And if we get another hard downpour here, I think that's going to be it. I don't know that we'll be playing much longer here if, in fact, that happens. And we just kind of feel it's uh, another front's on the way. That wind is really picking up right now. Yeah. Well, Mike is, Mike Sosha has got everything he's wanted to get out of today. Joe Blanton got three innings in. Here's the next delivery, and that one is a pitch that Conger just got a piece of, tipping it foul by the plate. Kirk Gibson's had a chance to see Delgado out here for an inning and a half, maybe two innings. But Kirk's really got more to lose than, the, than, the, than Mike does, really, because he's got a few of his starters out there on, on that wet surface. And just by the look of that dirt, and I, I know the way it is, that, that's, that's pretty sloppy out there. Delgado is set. Two and two on Conger. Two on, no outs. One one in the bottom of the third. Now the pitcher stepped off the rubber time called. Now he's ready. And the 2 2 pitch. That's blown in. Three and two the count. Another deep count for Hank Conger. Once again, just praising his at bats. These are great at bats for him. Not a few games that I've seen. Really showing a lot of maturity at the plate, zoning in and, and being selective, being disciplined. It's getting quite dark right now here at Tepe Diablo Stadium. The 3-2 payoff pitch, and Conger battles again, fouling a pitch off just outside the batter's circle. And we're looking at the uh, radar right now, and there is... Uh, Big front making its way uh, toward the stadium area. <laughs> it looks like nighttime almost, yeah, doesn't it? Sure does. <laughs> so Delgado taking time now between pitches. Gets the sign from the Eves. And again, a 3-2 delivery, and that one is low ball four. And a good at bat for Conger, waiting out a walk. Angels have them everywhere. They're loaded with no outs, and Jimenez will be the next batter. And the uh, catcher, Nieves, going out to talk to Delgado. 
Uh, he was pointing a little bit at the dirt on the ground there in front of Delgado. So Jimenez will be the batter. Yeah, that's sloppy out there for everybody. And you watch just the hitters hitting their spikes, trying to get a toehold in the box. And same thing for the pitchers. If you're, you know, they got brand new spikes on, and if they're not grabbing out there in the dirt, that tells you something. And actually probably grabbing too much dirt, probably clumped up pretty good. So a chance to uh, do some damage right here. Bases jammed. No outs and the pitch. Uh, swing and a miss for strike one. Very, very windy right now here at Tepe Diablo Stadium. And uh, you just kind of feel that in the next few minutes there might not be any more baseball here. The pitch, that one is cut on and miss for strike two. No balls, two strikes. Back to back changeups. Luis has got to be going, what's going on here? Spring training, throw me a fastball. It's swung through two changeups with bases loaded. Well, that's a big league pitcher saying, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let you hurt me right now. And uh, the changeup is a, a big weapon for Delgado. He will throw that pitch a lot, and he's had some success against Jimenez with that pitch here in this at bat. Two strikes to count, and the 0-2 delivery, and that one is cut on and missed. He got him chasing a high one, struck him out. Yeah, there's your fastball for you. <laughs> After a couple changeups, that thing's got to look mighty fast. So the batter now is Cowart. He walked his first time up. That walk came against Brad Ziegler, who started the ball game. A hit would mean a, a run, at least one, and probably more. Runners everywhere. They're loaded. 1-1, one, one, bottom of the third. Delgado's pitch. Yeah, that one is low and inside. Another changeup. This is for something for the young hitters. Just to be paying attention. You know, he just went after Luis with a couple off-speed pitches early in the count and hard late. Pay attention to that off-speed pitch here to Caleb. And he swings and misses that one on the outside part of the plate for strike one. This copyrighted broadcast presented by Authority of Angels Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels baseball. Here's the next pitch, and that one is a ball. It's tapped on the first base side, fielded by the pitcher. The throw to first is in time. The umpires, I don't know if uh, they're saying that ball, that ball uh, yeah, hit off the foot of Coward. Apparently, uh, that's the case. And uh, the home plate umpire, Jim Wolf, was unaware of it. It was like Kerwin Danley, who's been umpiring second base, uh, made that call. So, uh, foul ball. Off his shin. Hit the ground first, came off his shin. We were talking about this early in camp with some of the hitters and, so, you know, kind of little round table is that this is a perfect situation as a hitter. You're in control of that box. You're in control of the at bat right here. All the pressure's on this pitcher. Make him throw you a pitch you want to hit. Not his pitch. Don't expand the strike zone. And that's what you tend to see with young hitters. They want to expand, get, make something happen, and they're aggressive. And, but you got to be patient right here and make him come to you. He has, a, he has not thrown one strike, one hittable strike to the last two hitters. They've all been off-speed stuff, working the corners up out of the zone. And as a hitter, you just got to tell yourself to just be patient. Make him come to you. Two and two, the count on Cowart. Delgado's next delivery, and that one is waved at and missed. Struck him out. Change up. Yeah. He had uh, Cowart fooled, no doubt about it. So all of a sudden, uh, Delgado has gotten tough with the bases loaded, and now we see the uh, umpire starting to trot in, and they're going to tell the Diamondbacks to uh, come off the field. He had a pretty good lightning strike there right before that uh, that last pitch. Right. And so uh, there obviously are con some, some concerns right now weather-wise here. And I would tend to doubt that uh, we are going to play any more baseball. Uh, it would be a miracle if we have any more uh, baseball action here the rest of the day here in Tempe. It's almost uh, remarkable that we've 
gotten in uh, two plus innings here this afternoon. So the grounds crew members have already uh, made their way out onto the infield. They're uh, putting down a tarp on the pitcher's mound. And then we'll see if uh, they even uh, go about applying the uh, tarp to the infield as well. So uh, we now have been told that the umpires have indeed uh, called this ball game. So we're not even in a rain delay. The game has now been called because of rain. And uh, Tim Salmon, that's all the baseball we have in us today here in Tempe. <laughs> I was hoping to have a little bit more air time with you, Terry. Yeah, I wanted to spend more time with you. Uh, we were having a nice little visit here. Today. I don't get to do too many of these games, so, but it, nonetheless, it was fun. <laughs> I hear you. Well, uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow when the Angels are back here. And uh, the weather forecast looks a lot better for baseball. Colorado is scheduled to be here tomorrow to take on the Angels in Tempe and the uh, pitching matchup in that one. Jason Vargas against uh, Juan Nicasio. And then the Angels will be in surprise uh, after that for the ballgame Sunday against Kansas City. Uh, the Royals, a team that uh, they have had a tremendous spring here in the Cactus League. They've been winning games like crazy. So the Angels will face them Sunday. And Tommy Hansen will get the start in that ballgame. Luke Hochaber will be the starting pitcher in that game Sunday for Kansas City. So the Angels and the Arizona Diamondbacks have things washed out here in the bottom of the third inning. And the uh, game 1-1 uh, when uh, play has been halted uh, today. Our uh, next broadcast will be coming your way, as I mentioned, tomorrow when the Angels will face the Colorado Rockies here in Tempe. We'll start our coverage uh, tomorrow at high noon. And then we'll have the first pitch for you at 12-10. For uh, Tim Salmon and our producer-engineer, Darren Champ, Terry Smith, saying thanks so much for listening. Again, today's game called in the third inning with the score tied at 1. We'll talk to you tomorrow on the Angels Baseball Network and on Fox Sports West.